tests that were offered yesterday or the day before, I forget which day, uh, were involved taking out positions that were not filled. Uh, does that does that really do anything? I'm just just curious. There was one particular amendment, we dealt with this in finance as well, that was um, an increase, the 41 positions, that, that was uh, offered yesterday. Um, if you look at that department, there were already 70 vacant positions in that department. So they were adding another 41 positions to a department that they have 70 vacancies in. So in that particular case, we weren't eliminating, eliminating vacant positions. We were actually saying, you know what, you already have vacant positions. How about you go ahead and fill those before we add another two, uh, over $2 million in state funds, $4 million total, uh, and, and add 41 positions. Uh, so it's back to, uh, again, a basic management, but uh, it really wasn't a lot of, uh, there, there was some vacancies in other, uh, other amendments, but it really wasn't much. That was probably the biggest example, but mm -hmm. it was something that they already had 70 vacancies. If I could follow up on that, Rich, um, one of the things, uh, people in Alaska accept that we uh, have a need for services, we need to pay for those services, but what we expect them to pay uh, for vacant positions, they just ask questions, you know, why, if there's no one there collecting the paycheck, why is the money there in the budget? And we see money go, be allocated for one purpose and through creative accounting end up in an entirely different place. You know, money can be uh, changed across allocation and appropriation. And we saw that actually exacerbated when we saw money that was being given to the uh, commercial fisheries revolving loan funds and it was ending up being used for maintenance of effort. Uh, the people have a hard time understanding the details of the budget, but when we're paying for vacant positions, we're putting money out for one thing and it ends up here, that tends to erode trust in the process and uh, draws into question, you know, just why are we spending that much money? Okay, so, the, so, the big question, so the big question then would be? Uh, the fact that the money can be reallocated once you appropriate it, even if those positions are never filled. Mm -hmm. That, that's exactly correct. And, and we're seeing a new, a new thing, which is they can be reallocated from department to department. And usually the allocations are interdepartmental, inter but you're seeing something from Commerce now going over to Hess. And so I think for the public, that's just, it's, it's confusing. And, and frankly, it's confusing for mm -hmm. members that don't sit on finance that look at that and try to understand the budget. So. Now, Representative Pruitt, you said that uh, you thought the cuts were rather surgical. But um, there was, uh, some felt there was a need for more prosecutors so they could try cases. Others felt that there was still a need for more public defenders uh, as it be, almost became a constitutional issue. Um, so could there have been areas where the cuts were a little too surgical? Yeah, you know, I appreciate that, that question because I think what it gets down to is um, an effort to manage the situation we find ourselves in. The, the uh, public defender and, and the discussion related to the increase in the public defender's office, for example, it immediately went to, we need a million dollars more. And that's usually the, the conversation that we have is, we just flat out need more money. Well, with 100 uh, attorneys, 18 of them at, attor at attorney five, and of course, we, it, that was, there was some discrepancy in the initial uh, um, testimony from the public defender on that. He came back and clarified that, and I appreciate him doing that. With 18 uh, attorney fives, uh, what, what I offered was actually, let's take 10 of those attorney fives, and let's add, uh, at a lower classification, 15 attorneys. If the goal right now is that you say that you need more bodies, you need more people to do it, then let's rethink how we're managing and allocating the personnel that we have. And, and so what is necessary with the money that we have in a, in a constrained time is to look and analyze how we're delivering those services. And in this particular case, of course, that was rejected, uh, resoundingly rejected, and instead it immediately went back to, nope, we can only do this with more money. And I, I think that, that, show, that, that speaks to the administration and their desire to not actually uh, manage the situation that we're in. It also speaks to this majority to not turn around and, and push back against the administration and say, you know what, we're not just going to accept what you said. We're going to, we are, as the appropriators, are going to assist you in managing the situation that we find ourselves in. So uh, we had offered a way to deal with the, that challenge, but that was resoundingly rejected, and, you know, life goes on, I guess. 
Well, thanks. If there's no more questions, thanks for being here. Um, we One of the things we do want to say is that we want to let Alaskans know we're working. We heard you. We saw the recent poll that said 72% uh, of Alaskans would like to see the budget reduced. We hear you. We are continue to work towards that, making smart um, cuts to the budget. And uh, please keep your emails coming. And appreciate you all being here. And have a great day.